Hey y'all, it's Weight Loss Like a Boss. Um, I was on my way into the gym to do my workout today. Um, I got on IG and I had a message on there. So the message kind of gave me an idea for a video. So I was like, you know what? I'm about to just do it right now since it's on my mind. Um, a person on my IG, which is Weight Loss Like a Boss, um, also it's a fitness IG. You can find me on there. Um, I'm always open to comments, questions, likes, follow backs, water challenges. Right now we're doing a jump rope challenge, stuff like that. But uh, one of the questions she asked why she has been, like if I knew why she was like struggling to lose weight, she feel like she's doing everything correctly, but she is still not losing weight. So I came up with about four ideas where it could be, you know, I kind of said it to her too, because I have this is not the only weight loss journeys i've been on i've been on plenty of other ones ones that have failed where i tried bad diets i have tried some and like lost weight i have tried some, like lost weight but then sus sustain it um uh, sustain it sorry um or like all type of stuff yeah this time on this weight loss journey i chose to do it the correct way i also have started to research you know weight loss i look more into it and stuff like that and I follow people who read you know scientific studies about weight loss and stuff like that i chose to educate myself on this a little bit more this time around so i figured we could probably start doing car chronicles and for weight loss so i guess like a couple times out of the week or once a week i'll come here think of an idea and give like four tips to help so like I told her, I have four tips to think about if you're not losing weight. So tip number one, always be in a caloric deficit. So I asked her if, you know, are you counting your calories? Do you know exactly what you're eating? Uh, are you in a deficit? A deficit is different for every single body. And some people do like intuitive eating. Um, people choose like just clean eating because clean foods tend to have less calories. But you can also overeat the foods that you think are better for you. She's like, oh no, I, you know, I don't weigh my, I don't weigh my food, I don't calorie count, all that. That one could be an issue. My suggestion is to pick a calorie amount weigh yourself which is horrible because i hate the scale but weigh yourself for about a week and then see if see what that average is if are you losing day to day when you hit this amount and also even if you don't want to count the calories you can also just get a food scale one thing i noticed when i got a food scale is one cup of rice where i thought was one cup of rice was like two cups of rice probably two and a half and i was like oh this is just a cup i was wrong like i tried to just eyeball some stuff and um like i remember when i was younger my grandma was like oh the big spoon is a tablespoon like the eating spoon and the small one is a teaspoon that is not true y'all that is not true <laughs> and so i used to just try to measure like peanut butter and stuff like that like that mm, it's not the case get some real measuring cups because you will really find out some stuff and also even tracking like mayo ketchup mustard that stuff you can easily do a thousand calories with just some ketchup well i know i can because i love ketchup I, ranch ranch is my jam okay and i can eat that all day and just imagine eating about a cup of a cup of ranch and then a couple carrots too that's that's easily easily could be about 500 calories with some hidden valley ranch you, you got a whole cup of it so my tip is that is to help be in a caloric deficit. Weigh your food. It won't it won't hurt you. I promise it it may take a little bit longer to actually sit down and eat your food, but it will be well worth it when that scale starts coming down. And another thing I asked her is, well, I guess number two is if you tend to enjoy lifting weights. I tend to love uh, lifting weights. Like cardio, I dread cardio days. Even though I have just started adding more cardio days. So now I do cardio about three days a week and I live about three days a week. One thing I have noticed is when I was doing mostly cardio, the scale was dropping so fast, so fast, so fast. And I was so happy and so proud of myself. Um, 
but I'm one of the girls like I want to be strong I want to be able to lift stuff so um I like lifting heavy shit so I started lifting weights and I like fell in love with it but I notice the days when I tend to well not the days but when before when I was lifting more weights I felt like my clothes was looser I felt like I looked different but the number on the scale was not different and I have like a love-hate relationship with the scale. I love when it go down. I hate when it stay the same or when it go up. Um, so far in this weight loss journey, I have not had any ups. So I'm very, very thankful for that. For the month of May, I only did lose one pound. But I will show a video, sorry, a photo. And the photo, I have like legit the same outfit on same pose position everything and my body composition is completely different but the number on the scale is literally down one one pound since then but i look so different that was a hard thing that i had to adjust when looking at the scale like and during this weight loss journey i had to understand that you can lose weight or you can lose body fat. The body fat you're losing is so much more important than just the, the number on the scale. And another way you can track that, I feel like that's better, is photos. This picture that I'm about to show y'all, I look so, I look completely different. But <laughs> the scale was not telling me that I was different. Another way is um, tape measure. If you measure yourself, at least once a month and then come back and then measure yourself again you'll lose inches inches is important because most of the time it's body fat you're not losing muscle or anything like that so that's always important too um you know except for it's like the booty area you know i'm trying to gain a few inches on the glutes but besides that um i do love when them inches go down so use the skill as a tool do not become obsessed with the number because your body can change and the scale still be stuck at what it was before, you know? Just just don't rely on it. And number three is, are you moving enough? People tend to go to the gym, they go to work, they go to the gym, be there for 30 minutes to an hour, they then go home and sit on the couch. And then become a couch potato like oh i went to the gym today i don't i'm not walking up these flight of stairs i'm taking the elevator i went to the gym today i am not parking far away in this parking lot i'm about to i'm about to wait to this car pull out so i can get the closest parking spot people tend to be like that i ain't gonna lie sometimes i be like that especially with my sons and having them like i'm not walking across this whole parking lot with these boys and i try to get the closest parking spot and stuff like that or I'd be like, ooh, my, babe, my legs hurt. Can you pass me the remote? <laughs> you know, things like that. But we still have to move. Like, one thing I love about my Fitbit is I'm able to make sure I'm getting at least 10,000 steps a day. Since getting my Fitbit, I have to make intentional steps. Like, I get, sometimes I'll get up and I don't even want to. But my thing will go off and I'll be like, oh, you need to. 250 steps this hour the least i can do is get up and do 250 steps so i'll walk around sometimes i'll try to challenge myself to do a little bit more than 250 but um basically what i'm trying to say is if you look into your tde that tells you exactly how many calories you're burning through the day even just for like digestion brain all that good stuff you know movement like my hands and stuff like that um and there's a part called neat non-exercise activity thermogenesis or something like that but basically it's like 20 percent of your calories you could burn and so many people are, are very minimal because they tend not to move so my advice would be move more if you took your dog on a walk this morning take him out again when you come home from the gym or when you come home from work um, are you in the kitchen? You got to cook. You already in there. You're already standing up. Walk back and forth, pace back and forth, dance a little. This is all activities that can contribute to burning more calories. And I know it sounds silly, but literally I was 
playing with my boys outside when we're just like running with each other and then throwing a the football back and forth and chasing it and all that stuff. And I was able to burn about 200 calories and it was about 20 minutes just because I was moving more. Um, I don't tend to follow my calories on my watch too much, but it kind of gives you a rough idea. So it's like, instead of just going to the gym, going to work and then sitting, just get a little bit more busy. And my other thing I told her, so the last number four tip is to, you might need to see a doctor. I know that sounds like a dramatic, like, oh, sis, you went from all these self-help, self-care ideas to go see a doctor. But one thing I have noticed is, especially women, it could be so many hormone problems that makes you losing weight so much of a struggle. So many women tend to be estrogen dominant. Um, like I have a couple of fit sisters who are, who have PCOS, um, endometrial hyperplasia, things like that where all that estrogen which is built and like makes itself in like fat tissue and stuff like that so it's like the thing that's making you fat is growing because you're fat if that makes sense and i hate to use the word like fat because it's not nice and it's you know i guess fluffy is much better because i like that word that sounds better to me but anyways um those women have a harder time losing weight and where they have they even if they're doing hitting the calories they're moving more they hit it 10,000 steps every day um they're eating clean they go to the gym they're lifting weights they're doing everything that they're supposed to because of you know a hormonal imbalance they're still not losing the way other people lose and that could be very like daunting on someone so just a you know trip to the doctor and figuring stuff out you know with that will help especially because um, I don't like to be on medication or anything like that but I know there you can go get like on a progestin but progest progestin is like a synthetic um, progesterone hormone for you and I know that'll help and it'll tend to help with weight loss and overall it'll help with you know your reproductive system if you're having you know a little issues like that um, so, I mean, I honestly, I feel like a trip to the doctors wouldn't hurt, you know, and stuff like that. I always feel like it's important to educate yourself on your body. If something is imbalanced, it could always lead to other things and it could always become worse. So, but sis, we're already in the right direction. You're going to the gym, you're getting your steps in, you're eating clean. Yeah, one thing I found out on this journey, I feel like I'm getting off topic, but one thing I did find out in this journey that health is the real wealth. I noticed that I would freaking work my butt off somewhere else. I was getting up at five o'clock in the morning, getting dressed and being there by 5.30, six in the morning. And when I wanted to make that as a goal for myself to be at the gym at 5.30, six in the morning, I was not able to do that for myself. But somebody who a millionaire, I'm wait, I'm getting up pushing the clock for that person, and I won't even do it for me. I had to get out of that mindset, and I feel like getting out of that mindset in December of 2018 has helped me to where I am today. I do not feel like I've lost like a ton of weight because I've seen plenty of people, especially on YouTube, who've lost like freaking hundred pounds in like six months, you know, stuff like that. But this journey is not only for for my physical body is for my mental health. I have built so much confidence. I feel so much better. My anxiety is at a minimum. My depression is at a minimum. And like, it's a weight loss journey, but it's like a self-love journey. It's a returning back to Jasmine type of journey. And you know, I like that. And I want that for all of you also that's like watching this. But anyways, that is, no, enough rambling. That is my four tips for women who are having a hard time losing weight or if the scale is just not moving you can try those things and like let me know what you think in the comments like comment and subscribe and i will be back with another car chronicles